She's all dressed up with the same place to go. She's reimagining herself as Hillary 4.0. Is she just a sagging hack with a political facelift? Yes, and more. It's Hillary's revenge. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. But I was on stage during all those debates, which we won, by the way, every single one of them. But I was on stage with all those debates, first with some really fine people, the Republicans, and then with a very dishonest person, crooked Hillary Clinton. And during that time, and (laughs) during... She's not going to jail. She's about to pass go. Oh no, get ready for Hillary 4.0. There's going to be so much work to be done. I mean, we have confused everybody in the world, including ourselves. And (laughs) we have confused our friends and our enemies. They have no idea what the United States stands for, what we're likely to do, what we think is important. Uh, So the work would be work that I feel very well prepared for, having been in the Senate for eight years, having been a diplomat uh, in the State Department. And it's just going to be a lot of heavy lifting. So Um, are you going to be doing any of that lifting? Do you feel like... Oh, I have no idea, Kara, but I'm I'm going to... You know, I'm not going to even think about it until we get through this uh, November 6th election about what's going to happen after that, but I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure we have a Democrat in the White House come January of 2020. Credentials? She was lobbied in as senator for Jewish New York. Lost to Obama in 2008. Did Benghazi in 2012 and couldn't election fraud her way to the White House in 2016. She's now on her fourth turning, but with all the retreading, the wheel's still the same, yet thoroughly worn out. But the American Federation of Teachers, led by Jewish lesbian Randy Weingarten, That's her wife, Rabbi Sharon Kleinbaum, wheeled out the retread on a rotating spin. The President of the United States of America has recklessly called news media fake news, the lowest form of life, and the enemy of the people. And now Trump has nominated a Supreme Court justice who believes that presidents should neither be subpoenaed nor indicted, and whom the right wing is cheering on, hoping Judge Kavanaugh will be the fifth vote to reliably strike down laws they despise. And let me say a word about the nomination of Judge Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. This nomination holds out the threat of devastating consequences for workers' rights, civil rights, LGBT rights, women's rights, including those to make our own health decisions. It is a blatant attempt by this administration to shift the balance of the court for decades and to reverse decades of progress. You know, I used to worry that they wanted to turn the clock back to the 1950s, now I worry they want to turn it back to the 1850s. Well, maybe going back to the 1850s is not a bad idea, since abortion and sexual deviancy were deeply abhorred by American society in that era. Family values was not an empty slogan, nor was it counterculture. Striving for a virtuous society with its Christian ethics, The family home was the anchor and core of American civic life. Hillary conveniently forgets that the vast majority of suffragettes of the 1850s were women whose Christian experiences and beliefs motivated them to activism for better legal protections for their children and families. Hillary's other despised era, the 1950s, in which I grew up, was one of stability, unity, and optimism where men as heads of households earned a sufficient wage to meet their families' needs and more. Professional career opportunities were opening up for women in those days, but most women, given a choice, took pride in their chosen career of wife, mother, and homemaker, the manager of home economics and keeper of domestic tranquility. That's the home I grew up in, my friends. 
Slogans such as women's health decisions, a euphemism for abortion on demand had no setting in our social milieu. And the right to bear arms, if Hillary gets in, could become just another slogan too. Since this new administration took office, AFT members have rallied to save affordable health care. You've spoken out on behalf of students who are dreamers, immigrants, and refugees. You've championed LGBT students and their families. And along with young people from Parkland, Florida, to Chicago, Illinois, to Santa Fe, Texas, you've become some of the most courageous and outspoken advocates for common sense gun safety measures. And you've sent a resounding message that despite the Supreme Court's wrongly decided Janus decision, teachers unions are not going anywhere. Neither is the Anti-Defamation League joined at the hip with the AFT in its special populations resources of which the ADL contributes to its LGBT advocacy. It's the same old song, but though money can't buy true love, it can buy a scam nomination. So you seem rather passionate. I am really, I really. <laughs> well, yes, I am. So, <laughs> do you? We're going to talk about 2020 in a minute. Do you want to run again? No. Wait. No. That was a pause. Well, I, well I'd like to be president. OK. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, be, look, I, I, I think, hopefully, when we have a Democrat in the Oval Office in January of 2021, there's going to be so much work to be done. She means the work she wants to wreak as progressive executive task mistress and first feminist war president. All Hillary's got to do is tell the party she's got the money. Soros, Singer, Steyer, and tag team Bloomberg money, who may be her VP by the way, and a presidential rerun that looks like a B-movie will be plastered all over TV. We can feast our eyes on more of this. Or this. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and a collapse like this. That symbolizes the death of a presidential sales pitch. But rewind the tape. Commencing in prime time until exhaustingly hence will be Hillary 4.0. I don't know about you, but I turned off the TV a long time ago.